guys. Thanks for tuning into Wednesday Night Reviews. I'm sitting down with Jordan Alec at Canada Comics Open Library uh, on Dundas Street. Thank you for having us today. Yeah, no problem. It's always a pleasure to see new faces in the comics library. Awesome. Uh, actually, to speak about the library, uh, what can you tell me about it? When did it start? Well, uh, I think the, the founder of the Canada Comics Open Library started assembling the team um, about two years ago now. It would have been in May, June, July of 2018. Okay. Uh, she pulled a group of people that she knew was interested in the cartooning scene and comic books and graphic novels and things like that. Uh, and were also interested in library and volunteer work because she knew that she wouldn't be able to pay anyone for, for the work that we do here. So, yeah, she just started approaching people back then, myself being one of them. We met for months and months of meetings where we would just go okay. and talk and sort of dream about the idea of a comic library and what that might look like in reality as opposed to just... A thought. A thought, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we had all of these plans. Um, one of Rotem's big goals that I'm so proud of and in love with is like taking books that are written by marginalized creators and trying to make them more accessible to the public. Uh, because one, one of the things that she expressed was when she was working in bookstores and libraries in the past, she would try to find uh, female writers, but because they were so few and far between mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, the publishing world of men, it was, it was hard to just find them at all. They all just were mixed together amongst all of the other books. So I think that maybe is what cued the idea of trying to uh, focus more so on, on creators that don't get seen in uh, mainstream media as much. And yeah, then we were just talking for a while. We had a launch event in November 2018 um, on Church Street where we did a pop-up library. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a panel event that day as well where we had four cartoonists talking about their works to sort of kickstart the library as well as our first crowdfunding campaign where we managed to raise enough money for a year's worth of rent and then luckily enough we found oh. the Center for Social Innovation space which is where we have found our home. That's what you're looking right at here. right now. That's where we are. And we it's just been a, a blessing and like a huge lucky break for us. And we managed to open last March. So we're coming up to our first year anniversary. Awesome. And congratulations on Thanks. that. Yeah, it's super happy about it. Right on. Now, as, as you mentioned, um, it is on a voluntary basis. Um, so how is it that you go about getting all of these books that we're surrounded by. So the founder, Rotem, she donated a huge chunk of her collection uh, that she was willing to contribute to the library. I don't know how many books that was. I'm guessing like 300 books, but we're sitting with 1,400 books cataloged right now and a pile of other books in the corner there to, to catalog. Uh, and it's just been through generous donations of the, from the public and from comic enthusiasts. We have a wish list of books that we're looking for online and I was surprised to find that strangers are reading it and bringing in books from our wish list. They're like, oh, this is on your wish list. Oh, wonderful, thank you so much. So Perfect. That's how we found all of the books uh, and they keep coming in. Every, every two weeks, every week, we get a new box of books and it's always exciting to go through them. And Perfect. See, see what kind of loot we get. <laughs> that is so glad to hear. Like, I'm glad that a lot of people are participating and helping out. Um, now, you yourself are an artist. Um, within the Canada Comics Open Library, uh, you're a board member, correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And as a board member, uh, what is it that you do? So we have uh, board, board meetings probably once every two months, once every three months to discuss uh, where we are financially and what our plans are for the future of how we're going to stay open and how we're going to collect money to pay for the rent and insurance and the other things that we need to, to pay for to stay up and running. Um, as well as planning different events and giving ideas on um, different grants that we want to work towards. Uh, yeah, and just plans about what, what the future of the library looks like and how we can get there. Perfect. Well, that's okay. great. All right. Yeah. So, uh, as you're saying, for the board member, uh, you basically talk about how to keep the place running. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and you know, one of the 
first things he said today so far was Rotem was looking for people. I uh, wrote him the president and uh, lead librarian, uh, of course, for the Canada Comics Open Librarian. Um, you say that you stated that she was looking for other artists and people interested in comics within the community, uh, and you yourself are an artist. Yeah, yeah. So we met, uh, as well as a few other board members, met volunteering at the Toronto Zine Library. So the Toronto Zine Library is another uh, independently volunteer-run library in the city, except it's completely self-published material as opposed to the library, which is uh, published in a wide scale audience as opposed to such a small scale audience that the Zine Library did. So yeah, we wrote, that's where I met Rotem and we hit it off right away and I know they were, they pulled from a few other people in a part of the TZL uh, to, to be board members. So yeah, I kind of forget what your original question was <laughs> and I just start talking about the really, Zine Library. It wasn't really a question, it was just, um, like you said, uh, you are an artist, um, so you're one of those artists that she grabbed. Um, and for anyone out there uh, watching, absolutely check out Jordan's work. Um, where can they find you? Um, my, my Instagram handle, I post to every day, one panel a day. It's uh, Sabrini Teenage Witch. Uh, right now I'm working on a comic inspired by Sabrina the Teenage Witch 90s sh series with Melissa Joan Hart. I just watched the whole season or the whole series last year and fell in love with the character and the idea uh -huh. of going through puberty and having like the ability to cast magic and not only your voice is cracking but also your like casting spells without <laughs> intention and I just love that idea I think it's so funny and cute and yeah I mean I think it's stuff we all go through right we puberty through can be it, yeah. hell for some people a little easier for others but definitely and no matter what happens it's a rough time <laughs> and I think yeah, you totally. get to have fun with that right yeah definitely now before Sabrini, you did Don't Fret, which I happened to, a couple days ago, uh, read about the first third of it, I believe. Oh, nice. Thanks. Yeah, I really liked it. That's um, cool. I wanted to ask, what was the, the inspiration behind Don't Fret? Well, I started writing, or I, I guess I, the, a better way to put it is I came across the character of Fret while I was doodling one day. Okay. And that was probably close to eight years or so ago. And as soon as I like scrawled that character down, I had an attachment to it that, mm -hmm. I, that hadn't happened to me before that. Okay. And so really the inspiration was the character and then also wanting to work on a long form comic. And that's where I started to work on these daily panels where I'll just do one panel a day with sort of a vague notion of the themes that I want to explore and the work that I choose to, to write about. Yeah. And uh, I also wanted to, to focus on dreams and the, this idea that we're living two lives, our waking lives and our sleeping lives. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to explore those things. And, and it, I just told myself back in 2016, I think, is when I started that book, yeah. uh, that I was going to do one panel a day. and it, became a book. I worked on it for like two and a half years and yeah. 12 chapters later it was, it was all done. Yeah, so th that's, I think that's something that I thought was really interesting. So the medium of comics most often is a printed book. You've got say four to ten panels per page, mm -hmm. 22 pages on average, um, and instead for your comic, Don't Fret, and Sabrini, mm -hmm. um, it's one panel per day and is it first posted on Instagram and yeah, then... Yeah, I, I love the idea of like free digital media and it's something that I, I feel really passionate about is just sharing my work with the world in the most accessible way possible. And Instagram is just like the quickest way to post something online that I have found. It's just like so easy to, to just take my sketchbook and take a photo and then shoot it online. And then I will print it in zines and sell those and give them away and yeah. stuff so yeah. I think I think that's that's fabulous and obviously it goes a long way to speak of why you would work at a place like this yeah ex like I love the like the idea of being able to read books for free um, and not have to buy them and hoard your own collection because as I've learned like it takes up a lot of space and it's yeah. really expensive and stuff like that so yeah that's uh, like this 
It's funny, the, the day that Rotem approached me about the comics library, about three weeks before that, I started an Instagram account called Toronto Comics Library, and I was going to just lend my books out to, the, to Toronto. Mm -hmm. and I, was, I started photographing my own collection to sort of start a library, and then like, two weeks later, before I really announced that I was doing this, Rotem approached me and had this idea, and it was just like, yes, we're so... We're, we're on the same wavelength, clearly. Great minds think alike. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for your, your comic, uh, for Don't Fret, um, like you said, you, you play with awake and then dream reality as well. Mm -hmm. Now, reading through it, um, Fret, the character, and I think every character that exists within his world when he's awake, is a really fantastical character. Like he's not a human. Well, I don't think he's a human. But the way he looks is really distorted. And he's got this weird shaped head with these horn-like things. Um, and you, you frequently play with um, form and shape. Kind of like it reminds me of Ren and Stimpy. How they used to have you know elongated limbs or limbs that would loop de loop and do stuff. Yeah. Um, and then something usually, whether it's uh, a wiggling book or <laughs> some other thing pulls him into a dream where everything is expanded. Um, what sort of made you want to play with that? Well, I always liked the idea of fantasy and I, I've, I think I've always wanted to write a fantasy book and so the idea of Fret being pulled into a bookshelf I found was like just a good way to describe a portal to another world because that's essentially what books are. You open up a book and you're taken to this place that the author of the book has has uh, made for you to go to. And so I decided to choose the bookshelf as a way to pull him into this other world. Um, and I wanted to uh, explore the themes of like greed and uh, uh, like environmentalism. And I didn't want to do that in like um, a non-fantasy way because okay. I love when people have ideologies and write fiction about them and sort of have this mm -hmm. underlying political theory laced within yes. it, but not so loud and in your face saying like this is how it is and how I feel and this is good and this is bad. Like I'd rather just tell a story to show how I feel. And, that's that's why I uh, made the Dome Fret book. I like that. I, I love it. I think it's one. It's just a noble, good cause, but it's also a perfect medium for it. Um, now, one thing specifically about your your art I like. So, very very often within the context of comics, your your panel is your window into reality, um, and occasionally comics will play with it. But mm -hmm. I found often your panel where you would have words outside the panel or sometimes uh, there's a part where Fret is f sort of treading water and you've got his head in the panel and his little feet outside. <laughs> um, so you, you constantly play with that idea of sort of being in and outside of the panel and I felt anyway that it, it mimicked in and outside of the dream. Mm -hmm. um, but what was sort of the, the main reason behind playing with that, the, the boundary of the panel? Um, well. I mean, like, for, for words, often when something's really loud, I wanted to break the panel because it just will have more of an impact. It'll sound more loud, even though yeah. it's, like comics are quiet. But if you just push it outside of the panels, you'll be able to, to make it seem like, oh, wow, this is like, this sound is surrounding the whole image. So if, if during a, a waterfall scene, all of the words are on the outside going like, shh, or something like that, it just like, it frames the image with sound as opposed to the sound coming out of the image. I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but. I think it uh, does. Thanks, man. And, uh, and, yeah. and then like, the, for, for the characters, it's, I was, I did the whole Don't Fret book without using pencil. I just went straight to ink with all the panels. So often there would be times where I'd want to include something and then forget I wanted to include it. So I'll just like draw it outside of the panel and and hope it works. And and then for the idea that you mentioned about treading water, like his top half is mm -hmm. on top of the water and the bottom half is beneath the water, is the panel border to just say like, well, this is the line of the water, so you can't see it in the panel, but outside the panel there's his legs treading water. Like, I like that. Yeah. yeah.